Hello and welcome to the second part of the nuclear craft reactor building tutorial. In the last part, I showed you how to build a reactor around a certain fuel. And in this video, in this second part, I'm going to show you how to just build a really good reactor design and then find out which fuel is best for that design. Okay, so as I said before, early game, you're going to have to think more about the specific fuels you've got available. But in the late game, when you've got a lot of fuels available, um, you're going to want to do React Design probably the other way. At least that's how I prefer it. So I'll give an example of how I might do that. I'm literally going to just on the spot try and make a React Design. Um, you might want to try and make a really good reactor and then find out which fuel is the best for that reactor type. Now you can just go through all the mathematics and all the rigmarole of that, but um, very nicely, as I said before, there's a really awesome fuel calculator which I've sort of combined from two previous fuel calculators which will basically immediately tell you um, which fuel is the best for the design parameters that you put into the Google Doc. So I'm going to just come up with a reactor design here. Um, it's just a, let's see what it is, it's a 5 by 6 by seven across, so medium-sized reactor. Um, so I'm gonna start by probably, I'm just looking, uh, so this is an odd number, so uh, I'm probably gonna start by putting four cells. I'm gonna go cell heavy. So the fact that I'm putting so many cells in that are gonna be very high efficiency um, immediately tells me that I'm going to be dealing with a fuel that is probably very low heat. Um, exactly how low heat, we'll see. And also it obviously depends on how um, well I cool it as well. So. Let's put a load of cells in to start with. Uh, so the first thing I can do is obviously put some beryllium in between here. This is a pr perfectly valid moderator. And I'm going to put a bunch of beryllium in these gaps. Um, now the reason I've sort of done it like this, I, I suppose I could actually put beryllium here as well, actually. Now the reason I'm immediately thinking that I should do that is because um, I like the look of the emerald coolers. So emerald coolers have a very high cooling rate and much touch at least one active moderator and one reactor cell. Now all of these spaces um, are valid for uh, emerald coolers. So here, 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 um, in here, do, 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 and also where I'm standing. So already I've got quite a lot of cooling going on just from those uh, uh, emerald coolers. Um, I've got quite a lot of beryllium sitting up here, so straight away I'm thinking glowstone might be the way to go. But I've also got these two cells to think about. Um, so let's have a look what we have available. Um, so two glowstone in there with a copper would be one option. Another option is a cryothium. Oh yeah, cryothium and two glowstone would probably be the best option. And I can actually put cryothium all the way down there. Um, so if we look inside here, I can put cryothium, 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 cryothium. And then I can put two coppers, actually. So I can put glowstone, glowstone, and then these coppers, which are next to the glowstone, that's, that's perfectly fine. So I can put coppers there, glowstone, glowstone, copper, copper. Um, and then in the middle, I can put some cryothium. All the way down here, three, four. And then finally a cell. So that's quite a nice little core of cooling going on. Um, I've got a lot of the edges to deal with now. It's normally the reactor, the site, the, the spaces where the casing touches, where you've got to think a bit more carefully about what you're doing. Now, most of the time, um, it's sort of a good rule of thumb. Um, when you've got very dense uh, designs, this is not an example of a very dense design. This is a pretty, this is a pretty open design. A dense design usually means like the cells are touching the casing. Um, in that case, usually lapis is better than redstone. But when you've got this open space where you've got a lot of stuff to fill, um, the glowstone, uh, sorry, the uh, redstone and water combination with gold is definitely better because the gold requires water and redstone available. So um, I'm straight away thinking that I might want to go with some redstone. And the other great thing about redstone, of course, is it supports um, the liquid helium coolers. But you've got to be a bit careful because they must touch at least uh, must touch exactly one uh, active redstone cooler. So straight away, I'm thinking I'm going to go in the well in the corners maybe. Uh, the problem is that this is, well actually no, that's fine, you'll see why in a second. So maybe redstone down here. And it's very possible that because I'm sort of thinking of my feet here and sort of rushing a little bit, not to make this video incredibly long, that the design isn't going to be absolutely perfect. It's probably possible that you can in improve this design when it's done, but I'm just giving you an example of how you might go about it. Um, then I'm thinking uh, liquid helium coolers in here. Uh, it can't go there because it would be touching two. Um, now where the reactor cells are, uh, now, what do I do here? Now, this is a good question. Uh, what what uh, options have I got? So I've got the option of, I think lapis is an option. Lapis might be an option here, actually, bizarrely. Um, usually lapis don't appear in my designs, but this appears to be one where it might work quite well. So lapis here, 
and then tin could fit in there because it's going to be between two lapis along the same line. So that actually works quite nicely. Uh, in there I can use some magnesium because it must touch a casing and a moderator block. And the beryllium is a moderator block, so we can put that there and there. Um, now I've got this helium and this glowstone. Now the glowstone again could support some copper, so I can put some copper in there. That works. Uh, and then finally helium in these spots. So that works quite nicely. Um, now what should I do here? I've got an active uh, beryllium block here to deal with, so I need to deal with this space because if I put two helium here then I've got uh, nothing unless I can um, think about how I can make use of this beryllium block here. So what are my options? Um, obviously quartz is a start, but the problem is quartz only supports diamond and that requires water cores as well, so that's actually pretty tricky um, to actually set up. Um, I've got these endearing cores of course for the corners as well, so I don't have to worry about the corners. Uh, so let's just have a look through this. Um, gold cooler. Ooh, it's tricky. I don't know, maybe I'm just gonna have to. Uh, maybe I'm gonna have to uh, give up on that on those spots there. But that's only four spots. Uh, well, actually, it's one. Yeah, four spots so far that I'm not gonna be able to use. Um, it's possible that I'm just missing something, but I don't think I'm actually going to be use this. I'm not going to be able to use this space here. Um, but yes, uh, helium cooler is obviously the thing to do here. Now I've just realised that I could set up a diamond cooler. So if I get some water coolers, um, so for a diamond cooler I'm going to need two active water coolers and one active quartz. So I can put a quartz cooler on this beryllium, like that, and then I can put water coolers here and there, and that means that I can. Sl sl uh, slip a diamond cooler in the middle and that will be touching a quartz and two water. And I can actually do basically the, the exact same thing down here. Um, now let's not uh, forget to do the magnesium between here. What else have I got on top? I've got lapis tin and copper, that's right, and liquid helium. Liquid helium and then lapis copper and tin. Tin, copper, liquid helium, oops, liquid helium, and lapis. Okay, so I've just basically replicated what I've what I did on top on the bottom. Um, so let's carry on with this. Uh, so liquid helium will go here and here, um, but so that I can access the back, I will uh, put the endearium in now. So I put the endearium in there, endearium in there, and then liquid helium here and here. I'm going to forget about this spot, I don't think I can do anything there. And then I've got this diamond set up, so let's do the same over on this side. So water, oops, uh, no, water, oh, what have I done in that space? I need to do something with this space here. Um, what could I do with this space? I could put myself, just a, a magnesium would do, oh sorry, a, a lapis would do, wouldn't it? A lapis would, would do perfectly well in that spot. And in fact, I can actually put a tin cooler in there. Oh no, I, I need that space for the quartz. Um, yeah, so the quartz. Uh, see, this is the thing. Sometimes you, you forget what you're doing. Lapis, like that. The diamond is supported. Let's do the same over on this side. Lapis, quartz, lapis, diamond, water. And then I can literally replicate this thing. I can I can mirror it downwards. So I can do a uh, liquid helium, liquid helium on the bottom, followed by water, water, diamond, lapis, quartz, lapis, lapis, quartz, lapis, water, diamond, water. Okay, that's looking pretty nice so far. And now I've got these two sort of walls to deal with. Um, so I'm going to actually have to crack open the back of this reactor because otherwise I won't be able to access it. Let's just open that up quickly. Okay, so what do we do with these sides? Now this is um, sort of the, the finishing piece, isn't it really? So let's get this endearium up there. And now we have quite a lot of stuff to work with. So we forget about the emerald coolers because they can't support anything. Now I've got these lapis coolers here. They really can't do much. Um, because of the uh, the tin needs another one on the other side. So straight away I'm thinking uh, that we need to deal, we need to make use of this reactor cell here. Um, now what can we do? So 
first thing I'm thinking, if we look here, is redstone cooler next to a liquid helium. So let's let's sort of do that, see if that, that works. See if that works with what's to come. So liquid helium, liquid helium. Now we can't put liquid heliums down here because unfortunately it'd be next to two uh, redstone coolers, so we cannot do that. Um, instead, what we could do maybe is make use of a gold cooler no we can't even make use of a gold. oh we can we can actually make use of a gold cooler um but it may be better to use something else um we could do the same sort of diamonds thing on the front i think uh yes no we can't do the diamond thing oh yes we could do the diamond thing if we really wanted to um, but i don't know if that's actually our best option i think our better option might be um to use water here and that will uh, give us access to gold on the front so gold here and here because it's next to a redstone and a water so then we can put uh, iron up in these places oops I haven't got an iron yet so iron would go up here is there anything better that we can do I feel like yes there would be I feel like this redstone cooler is getting in the way but I don't know if there's a way around it um, not sure if there is really it's difficult isn't it really uh let's just carry on and see how we do so next stage would be these uh now there's a lot of potential for these cells here uh i need to put iron down here of course a lot of potential for these cells um now a possibility might straight away be um lapis and tin that's one option another op uh, option is to put redstone down the middle i think this actually might be the best option um so redstone here and here and redstone here and here and that means we can put liquid helium either side so there 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 and there 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 and there and then down the middle we can just put lapis I think that works reasonably well I think um, now what we could actually do is instead we could put a water there maybe and put a gold but then the problem is that we lose this space here so no I don't I don't think that's actually any better so I think unless I'm missing uh, something that is really as good as we're going to get for this particular um, cell structure so I'm going to just repeat the same on the back let's just rem remember it quickly Okay, so that looks about done on the other side. So all we need to do now is close up the cell structure, or the, the actual casing. And there we are, there's our complete reactor. So, as I said, this design was pretty much on the spot. Um, it's probably not the best design, there's a lot of holes. Um, I don't really like it when there's holes in the reactor, that just sort of means I don't think I've put the cells and graphite in very efficient places. But to be honest, like this is a pretty good example um, of a reactor design because I think I used pretty much every single cooler in that. I, I can't think of any that I didn't actually use. Um, so that was quite a nice example of using all the different types of passive coolers. Um, so that is uh, that's all right now what we want to do now is work out what the best type of fuel to use is so what we do is go into this uh, reactor um gui um now i'm actually going to replace this quickly because it still has that leu 235 from before now what we want to do is um, we've got no fuel in there and we can check this bar here and it tells us that the cooling rate is um 18,200 heat per tick um and also keep in mind the heat multiplier uh, which is 933 percent and the efficiency it's actually quite a high efficiency reactor because of all those cells being so close to each other and all the graphite linking them um, it's 416 percent efficiency so we want to keep those figures in mind so what we do now is head over to the official nuclear craft ftb wiki page um, thank you very much to everybody who has contributed to this um, there's so much information on here it's absolutely crazy um, we're going to head over to the fission reactor section um, in this little tab down here and if we scroll down, uh, we will find somewhere the fuel calculator. Here it is. So thank you very much to Jox and Snartlord. Um, their Google Docs have been combined into one, um, which I have put on my uh, Google account. Um, now you can just download this. I think you, I don't remember exactly how it works. I think you basically just press file and make a copy and then you can actually edit this and use it yourself. Um, so what we do is we have to input the number of cells, the efficiency of the reactor, the heat multiplier, and the amount of cooling 
and the dimensions that's not actually important for a safe reactor uh, but we'll put it anyway um, because it will give you different meltdown times depending on how big the reactor is so let's head here um, so first of all 18,200 so let's put that in minus 18,200 uh, then we look at the heat multiplies 933 efficiency is 416 933416 and then the number of cells is 24 24 and our uh, dimensions are 5 by 6 by 7 five six seven and it tells us um, both the best safe and the best unstable um, fuels so the best safe fuel is LU233 oxide and that will get us 20,000 uh, RF per tick basically and um, there are going to be a few rounding errors uh, here and there both in the in the uh, actual game nuclear craft and also in this calculator but if we actually go ahead and get LU233 oxide um, it tells us that the um, projected um, heat is going to be minus 1,406 1, heat per tick. So let's get some LU233 oxide. Let's put it in. Let's see if it works. Should do. And there it is, minus 1,400 heat per tick, 20,000 RF per tick. So this is telling us that LU233 oxide is the best fuel for this particular design that I've just made. Um, so that's not too bad for a uh, 5x6x7, 20,000 RF per tick, that's no small amount. Um, but if you are happy to set up a little comparator uh, setup, um, then it says down here that the best unstable is LECM245 oxide, and that generates um, a average of... Um, uh, 21,652. Now it will actually generate 22,600. So if we actually um, get the fuel, what is it again? I completely forgot. It's LECM245 oxide. There it is. Let's break that, put it back. And we can see here that the RF per tick is 22,000. Um, but the reason that it has this effective uh, RF per tick is it basically takes into account how much time it's going to have to spend cooling down. Um, so the meltdown time for this particular uh, fuel is 315 seconds so just over five minutes so that's quite a long time um, so it's going to heat up very very slowly if we actually look here it says that the um, amount of heat that it gets per tick is about 800 uh, yeah that's right um, so uh, and you can see here the heat level is um, a maximum of five million so it's going to take a, a lot of a lot of time to actually reach that point um, but basically uh, the calculator here in this effective column um, takes into account how much time uh, the reactor will have to be off to cool down and so the effective power is actually um, under the normal base power, the raw power of the reactor when it's on. Um, but still, you can see that's actually a bit more than the LEU233 design. Um, it just needs uh, to have a comparator while the LEU does not. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much how you do it. Um, it's a pretty nice little tool for quickly working out um, what's best for your design. Um, so hopefully that has been a little bit of an idea of both how to design a reactor for a fuel and how to work out which fuel is best for a particular reactor design. Um, if you've got any questions, go into the comments as usual. Thank you all very much for watching. Um, I'll try to get the Fusion tutorial out as soon as I can. Um, I'm actually working on a few things on the reactor at the moment, so I want to sort of just get them finished off. There's a few new sort of controls in the GUI of the reactor. Um, I want to get them finished off, and so in a few weeks' time or whatever, I'll get the reactor tutorial done. Um, and I want to make it good so that um, you know you can really understand how it works. Obviously active cooling I need to go through better as well because I didn't go through it very well in the last time. So yes, thank you all very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.